Hello, church family. It's Pastor Thad, another midweek devotional. And this week on question number six, how many persons in the Godhead? Let me pull up the question for today. And we can see all of this good stuff that we have for us. This one is taking the question from last week of the unity in persons, in substance of the Father. The, the Trinity is one God, one Lord, equal in power and glory. This question now is unpacking that to say, yeah, in that one God actually has three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are shown throughout Scripture in full and glorious ways. And, and this question unpacks that. So let me read it for us, and then we'll get to the, the Scripture and how this helps us in everything, not just is directly applicable to today, but it helps us in eternity, and that's a wonderful thing. So the question is, how many persons in the Godhead? The answer is that the catechism, the shorter catechism gives us from number six, is there are three persons in the Godhead. This is our book, by the way. Three persons in the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we know this, that these three are one God, the same in substance and equal in power and glory. There's so much there that we can unpack. And those of you that want to chew on that a little bit more, that want some more meat along with that incredible uh, bread of, of truth that you can chew on there, go to the Confession of Faith, chapter 2, on the Trinity. And there's a number of paragraphs, three or four really good paragraphs with many, many scripture verses that you can see how they're understanding almost every single word or phrase. Every single one is, is referenced to not just a scripture phrase, but a scripture passage. What's beautiful as I was looking through that, and what I want to emphasize here as we get into 2 Corinthians 3, is the, the truth of who God is, is an objectively true uh, piece of information. It, it's objective, which means it's not based on my experience of that truth. It's true whether I know it or enjoy it or learn it or not. It's been true from the beginning of eternity. That's an oxymoron. There's no beginning to eternity, but you get my point. It's been true forever past and it will be true forever future. And the beauty of how God shows us this throughout scripture through every single example. I'm, I'm looking down the list. There's Deuteronomy. There's Thessalonians. There's Job. The beauty of how God shows his persons, who he is at the depth of his being, with his, which is triune, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The beauty of that is he shows us that in, in and through our experience with him. And a lot of those, most of those maybe, are through suffering, are through hard times, are through times when we lament like David in the Psalms. Why God? Where are you? And God says, I am there. I'm there in, in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'm there as overarching ruler, but I'm there as compassionate son. I'm there as empowering spirit, and I'm there as, as subsuming fire to care for you all over. So this is beautiful in this passage that this question and answer that it reminds us not only that there's an there's an truth that is behind this of who God is, but there's a deeply personal subjective truth that comes along with this too that there the God all of who God is, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is is here for for me. That he sent his son, his very own son for me and for you. So, 2 Corinthians 3.17, this is a beautiful passage. I hope you memorize this, but also chew on a little bit of the context because it's really helpful. Paul's saying now, this is the passage that, um, since we have hope, just before this in verse 12, we're not like Moses, who had to put this veil over his face because he beheld God's glory and it made him super sunburned, so he, reflected, he, he was glowing in a sense. We're not like that, but we can read the word and unveil our faces to see the Lord of glory. And now in verse 17, now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Did you catch that beautiful? This is objectively true that the, the Lord is the spirit. That's true whether I acknowledge it or not. 
But what's beautiful and what is subjectively applied to my experience is that where the Spirit of Lord is living in with me, where I'm following the Lord in the Spirit, there's freedom. And we with all, sorry, we all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image, this, this image that we were uh, created to be like in the image of God. Now we're in the new image of Christ, which is the full image of humanity from one degree of glory to another. And all this, for this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. That's, that's remarkable. That God is so... God, he's powerful, he's glorious. And the way that he shows that is by coming down, condescending to a low level, to the powerless and the gloryless people like me to put his spirit in and work through us to see that. C.S. Lewis puts it in the historic commentary that the words God is love has no real meaning unless God contains at least two persons. So it's this bridging the gap from how is God a unity? One God, the Lord is one, Deuteronomy uh, 5, the Shema. How is that true? but still that God can be love and love is only love if it's shared, if it's in community, at least two. We know that God is three, but at least two. So how can God be love, but also God be relationship? So God is one God, but he's three persons. Now you can take the rest of eternity to wrap your brain around that, which you get to do for all of eternity to enjoy that, to to savor that, to, to really see it as it is as your mind can comprehend. And here and now, we can, we can rest in the, mysteri- the mystery, the, the mysteriousness of that, to say that's incredible. And that should lead us both to glory, to enjoy it, to praise God, but also to pray. So I want to end with this prayer, for, again, from the Valley of Vision, but he's uh, shortened it to be really sweet, short and sweet in this final moment. Let's pray. Oh, Holy Father, you have freely given of your Son. O Divine Son, you have freely paid my debt. O Eternal Spirit, you have freely bid me to come. O Triune God, you do freely grace me with salvation. Amen. I hope you let that sink in, force it, make it sink in, see it sink in throughout your day as that deep and eternal truth of who God is in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, becomes true for you as you live and love and learn to to see him at work in your world. Amen. Have a blessed day.